A reading from Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord of hosts, glean thoroughly as a vine, the remnant of Israel. Like a grape gatherer, pass your hand again over its branches. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? See, their ears are closed, they cannot listen. The word of the Lord is to them an object of scorn. They take no pleasure in it. But I am full of the wrath of God, the Lord. I am weary of holding it in. Pour it out on the children in the street and on the gatherings of young men as well. Both husband and wife shall be taken, the old folk and the very aged. Their houses shall be turned over to others, their fields and wives together. For I will stretch out my hand against the inhabitants of the land, says the Lord. For from them the least to the greatest of them, everyone is greedy for unjust gain. And from prophet to priest, everyone deals falsely. They have treated the wound of my people carelessly, saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. They acted shamefully. They committed abomination, yet they were not ashamed. They did not know how to blush. Therefore, they shall fall among those who fall. At the time that I punish them, they shall be overthrown, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from Mark. They came to the other side of the lake, to the country of the Gerasenes. And when he had stepped out of the boat, immediately a man of the tombs with an unclean spirit met him. He lived among the tombs and no one could restrain him anymore, even with a chain. For he had often been restrained with shackles and chains, but the chains were wrenched apart and the shackles he broke in pieces and no one had the strength to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and on the mountains, he was always howling and bruising himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and bowed down before him. And he shouted at the top of his voice, what have you do to me? Have, what have you do to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high? I adjure you by God, do not torment me. For he had said to him, come out of the man, you unclean spirit. Then Jesus asked him, what is your name? He replied, my name is Legion, for we are many. He begged him earnestly not to send them out of the country. Now there on the hillside, a great herd of swine was feeding and the unclean spirits begged him, send us into the swine, let us enter them. So he gave them permission and the unclean spirits came out and entered the swine and the herd numbering about 2000 rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned in the lake. The swine herds ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then the people came to see what it was that had happened. They came to Jesus and saw the demoni demoniac sitting there, clothed and in his right mind, the very man who had the legion, and they were afraid. Those who had seen what had happened to the demoniac and to the swine reported it. Then they begged Jesus to leave their neighborhood. As he was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed by the demons begged him that he might be with him. But Jesus refused and said to him, go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and what mercy he has shown you. And he went away and began to proclaim in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him. And everyone was amazed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
again to read the song at Christ Church Cranbrook for the third Sunday in Lent. We hear tonight two lessons, including a long and extended pericope from the Gospel of Mark that don't make it into our regular three-year rotation of Sunday Eucharistic readings. And for good reason, you might say. For we have the harsh language of the prophet Jeremiah, full of the wrath of the Lord, he said, upon those whose eyes are closed, whose ears are closed, who do not listen, who are greedy, and deal falsely. And the market story of the demoniac legion, numbering 2,000, exercised into a herd of swine and catapulted into the lake. Not Sunday morning material. And yet, two thoughts may serve us well as we think of our almsgiving, our showing mercy, this land. One of the sources of the Lord's anger in Jeremiah is they have treated the wound of my people carelessly, saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. A false peace doesn't recognize the dignity of those who suffer. Our call is to accompany or to accompany those in pain, to walk with them, to know them, and when the time is right, to offer mercy as a way to help them lift up from the depths from which they've been calling. Perhaps we see Jesus do that in a way with the possessed man. The unclean spirit has clearly been tormented. He hides in tombs. He has broken the shackles and chains that have restrained him. He's howling and bruised. And yet, Jesus asks his name to know him, to have power over the legion, the demon, certainly, and to offer the mercy of exorcism to reclose him in his rightful mind, to paraphrase our hymn. He tells the man, go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and what mercy he has shown you. May all of our friends be able to say the same. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishop and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the towns and cities in which we live, for every place and community, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel on land, 
on water, or in the air. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and suffering, we pray especially for those for whom our prayers have been requested. Rachel Bates, Rachel Canavesio, Ryan Hoshaw, Arnold Matthews, Bella, Connor, Ella, Trudy, Vilu, Mike Gunnels, Pastor Lauren Kirschkar, Chester Smilars, Erica Lorenz, the family of Stephanie Barton, Robert, the Slater family, Helen Batcher, Pastor Joyce Matthews, Bob Woodruff. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for printed prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For what else or whom else are you praying or thankful tonight? My prayer is for my brother and sister-in-law. I just found out they have COVID. Lord, have mercy. Prayers for healing for Brian, Claudine, and Kathy. My friend Laura, who's ha facing an operation tomorrow, may it be successful, dear Lord. Dear Lord. Pray for Dan Dan still in hospice. my friends Anne, who is in hospice and for eleanor and isabel who are facing their separate illnesses lord have mercy for healing for beth and thanksgiving for my mother-in-law kay who just turned 98 years old Thanksgiving that my birthday is tomorrow and I have made it another year on the planet. Happy birthday. Praise the Lord. I invite you to join with me to pray for those who have no one to pray for them. For all who have died in hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, especially Rin Westfall, Betsy Clark, Franz Golafilio, Stephanie Barton, Michael Mouse, Frank Kelly, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord our God. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen.